All right. I am ready. I don't need the minute. <laughs> I got everything ready. Guys, hello. Welcome. I uh, just want to say before I get started, thank you again, Jamie, for the raid. Uh, truly appreciate it, dude. Uh, we have uh, to finish this feedback for the fighter. Um, this week has been crazy. Um, I'm going to get into it for a little bit, and then we're going to move right on to Ash's stuff. Uh, my pastor of eight years, um, that raised me in Christ, uh, passed away on Easter Sunday. He was only 67. I'm going on Friday to his funeral, so I will not stream. So I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow. I might stream tomorrow. Uh, but I just wanted to say to the people who constantly watch me, I won't be streaming on my regular scheduled programming on Friday because I will be at a funeral. It sucks, but he's no longer suffering, which is a good thing. Thank you, Rockta. I appreciate it, man. Um, it's very multifaceted. Um, my best man at my wedding, um, that was his father-in-law. So I was connected to him in more ways than one, than just a pastor. But um, yeah, it was just a lot to process um, this week. Um and then yesterday uh, was just one of those days that I kind of, I wanted to stream. I saw people were streaming. Uh, you know, I saw Jamie streaming. I watched a little bit of his. I watched a little bit of Nice. And I, I just honestly wasn't in the mood. So I am better. I feel better. I feel collected. So like I said, let's talk about the fighter. Um, The one thing that I have been noticing is a lot of people you know rightfully so praising intrepid right which they should be doing i think the melee combat uh update from the last time we saw it is is really good but it's not perfect you know i i think you know most of us in the ashes community space especially as content creators i think we get overly hyped we get overly excited um uh strangeness thank you so much i appreciate that thank you thank you um and so i think sometimes you know it's hard to you know be judgmental to a company that you know is very transparent that's very open and fun and you know just great people in general but there are issues you know what i mean um and even when I was uh, reacting to my initial stream, the basic attack doesn't look fluid, right? Um, and again, that could just be some simple animation touch-ups, which I, I think that's what Steven was going to allude to, because I think he was going to say something about the animations of certain things, but then he was interrupted. So that could very well be... Uh, Turgo, dude, yeah, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. And if you want a hat... I have a merch store that has many different colors of this hat. I got a hat that says Sandal Lord. I got a hat that says crafters make the best shit. I got uh, make uh, MMOs great again, make games great again. I got a whole slew of that shit. So if you're interested, you can always go check out the store. Um, but anyway, back to fighter. I want to, so the one thing I'm going to leave right now is my feedback regarding the talent tree in general but more so um about the fighter talent tree you know and there hasn't really been a change since the last time we saw it which was during the ranger showcase uh nemesis dude what's going on man good to see you dude good to see you um so let me see <sighs> let's go here And I'm going to do this or there we go. So you guys can just see it a little bit better. Okay. So a basic feedback is where do you start from? Um, I understand that 
this talent tree is a functional uh, tree for you, the developers, but it is confusing as all hell to us gamers. <laughs> Uh, I got drunk and fell asleep at the Golden Feather. Then I woke up here in Minus's room. <laughs> Hope nothing happened. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um. Uh. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to Ice Room. We we're just talking about uh feedback. I've I, I've left a whole bunch of feedback uh, on Monday, and then here I am on Wednesday trying to finish that feedback uh, for everybody. Let me see. The mage in the group just ported us over. That is all. Yeah, let me see what kind of magic dust uh, did he use, though. Well, I think he used the power of the hype train. You know, let's all believe that for uh, just a little moment. Um, so the fact that the this talent tree, of course, it's not completed, right? It's an alpha talent tree. But um, what is the point of the arrows? Like, I, like, are you forcing us if you choose this ability to go in a certain direction? Let's see, I'm just going to say that. Are you forcing us to go in a certain direction by choosing an ability? See, I, I like, and again, maybe it's just, I like the more, you know, spider web kind of approach, but again, if you want to have us go in certain directions, I think there's just a better way to do it. Um, let me see if you could look at the wiki, I should have brought up the wiki. I guess I wasn't, let me see fighter. Let me see. It looks like you must select this skill to unlock that skill kind of thing. Yeah, I know. Um, and even WoW's talent tree is like that to a certain point, right? So you need a certain amount of a point allocation in this bracket to move on to the next bracket. Um, and if you want to choose this next skill, you have to pick the previous skill. But there's also other things in the WoW talent tree, right? Where you can pick the corresponding node next to it that still might be able to select that other one. So you can bypass A and select B and still get C, right? So you can go from A to C or you can go from B to C. Um, that's still a thing too. I just feel like um, it's, this tree is just very, very, very weird. Um, and so I think, you know, having these out and I think that's what Brian was saying during the feedback or during his thing was the fact that I, I don't think that they finished putting in all the abilities. And, uh, and again, this is also completely an unfinished thing because, of course, the fighter doesn't have just these abilities. There is still a lot of um, abilities. The base fighter kit is still missing. Uh, if we look at it, what Steven said in the original live stream, like, um, I think years ago at this point, he says that each class was going to have anywhere between 30 to 40 abilities. This is nowhere near, uh, 30 to 40 abilities. Uh, so, uh, nuclear, what's going on, man? Uh, glad to see you. Um, so I think that's where, you know, this tree is basically working, um, probably more towards like an alpha two thing, just to kind of see like, what do people think? about you know like let's let's just say as an example if this right here was your starting point so if this was your starting point and you had to go from like level one to level two and then you had to go from you know from here to here and then from here to here like do you realize how boring that is like do you realize how like just not good that is right like and again 
this, this may be just a bad example, right? Like of starting here. I don't think you start here, but I, I was just trying to, you know, as a, for instance, kind of thing. Um, I just think there needs to just be a better starting point. I think that's, uh, what I would probably say. Um, please give us a, um, obvious, uh, starting point in the tree and actually give us better routes or better routes to abilities and have uh passives that can buff the fighter without see the one thing too is that all of the like the the buffs were buffs to abilities or like augments to abilities like i haven't seen anything that you take this ability and this ability is more of a passive that just works in general for the fighter right like i think having those kinds of like i want to call them free passives but it's just you know you have a talent tree with like here's some passive abilities here's some actual abilities like you know a uh, action tab abilities whatever right but having some passives thrown in there too that can change up your gameplay you know could be you know interesting but i don't know if they want to do that more so with the weapon talent tree so this is this is also very interesting to me too because having a separate weapon talent tree and then the like ability talent tree like if they want to focus the ability talent tree to be more focused on the abilities and have the weapon talent tree more focused on the like the weapon stuff but i think you can in my opinion i think you can add passives in both trees for the fighter um and it's just a passive for like maybe executing a certain weapon combo uh properly could you know award you like a you know five second you know critical strike buff or a, you know a five second uh healing or you know some, something like that right like just something that you know adds a little bit of you know ooh la la and flavor you know uh build it into their stances i mean yeah like um they could do that you know but all, but i guess all i am saying is there isn't anything here that is relating to just a buff like you know, like a passive buff to the fighter. Everything here is only relating to abilities. So if you look at other talent trees from other games, like it, a lot of the a lot of the talent tree stuff is like buffs to the class. You know, it's not just giving you abilities. It's it's other things as too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that icon with the few swords on the left may look like it has it may have a passive uh, swords on the left. Uh, yeah, well, it's a fighter work in progress. So this could be a passive, but having one passive in all of this, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm just trying to offer, like, what is the focus? Like, what? That's kind of what I would like the developers when they're on these live streams to talk about their philosophy on these trees. And that's what I'm going to tell them right now. Um,. I would really like Brian to talk about the philosophy on these talent trees. What is the current thinking? on what goes in the tree for example do we only want like actual abilities um with 
like augments to those abilities only. Phantom, dude, thank you so much for the sub, dude. Always appreciate it. It's always good to see you here, dude. Thank you, thank you. Let me see. Uh, no, no flat buffs to damage or crit or anything that leads to power. Um. So, so J Rock, you're you're talking about only having like some kind of a of a flavor buff. Okay. So if you were if you were designing these trees, would you only want like abilities like cataclysm? So like let's let's break it down, right? So if we want to only put in abilities, then it's basically going to be this ability and you know having certain ways that this ability could be like augmented or manipulated in a certain way, right? Let me see, right, this combo gives you a buff to this spell plus 20% damage. So you want, so you don't want passives in this talent tree. You want there to be better passives in the weapon talent tree, like what I was saying earlier, right? So if there was like a certain passive that executed a weapon combo correctly, then you wanted to give something like that, like a buff and plus 20% damage. Either or. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> I'm just, and again, it's, it's really hard because... <laughs> Every single time, and this is the thing that also kind of bothers me, is, you know, I'm asking, well, what is the current philosophy? Like, what are y'all thinking? And I was like, oh, do you want this or that? And then Intrepid usually says, well, what do you want? And I just like, I don't know what I want. You know what I mean? I, I could want many things. You know, I, I could want a whole slew of different things. It's what you guys want. You know, it's what you guys are creating. It's what you guys have in your minds at a foundational development level as to like how you want to execute these talent trees. If you can give me a foundation, right? If you can give me, well, this is our current mode of thinking that we want the talent trees to be like X, then I can give you my Y feedback, right? But usually Intrepid always is like, they show us something and then when we ask for like direction or philosophy or anything like that, it's always like, well, well what do you want? You know, and it's, <laughs> dude, I'm a MMO RPG gamer. I usually want everything, right? So if it was up to me personally, like I would just say, get rid of this and give me a uh, lost or last epoch uh, ability trees to where you basically have to level up to level something like let's say level 10 to earn cataclysm you put a point into cataclysm and now you have a whole spider web tree of like you know all these things that you can choose to manipulate cataclysm with like that's what i would want you know what i mean so it, it's like i don't know like but is that feasible? Are you going to literally make 30 to 40 trees? Because that's what you would have to do. Like, I again, I'm trying to be realistic, right? Like, I'm not wanting just some mirrored copied system from another game to be plopped into, into ashes. But if they take inspiration from a certain game, Last Epoch, awesome. You know, great. And I, because they're taking inspiration from games like Arc Age and Lineage 2 and you know, EverQuest and all other stuff. So it's fine. You know what I mean? But again, because we have a lot of these, because we have a lot of these foundational principles and systems, we can leave feedback accordingly, right? This whole, like, this is why us as a community aren't trying to uh, give feedback on PVE servers, because that's not a foundational philosophy Ashes is going to do. So that's that's literally something we don't even have to worry about. So I would like, you know, Brian, you know, if they, man, I also hope, and I don't know if they're going to do this this coming month in April, but man, if they do the rogue class, which I don't think they're going to do, because they, Stephen probably would have said if they were going to do rogue, and they're probably not going to rogue. But if they do rogue in May, <clears throat> I would love if Brian came out and said, hey, 
And maybe they'll bring up a maybe more updated version of this talent tree in May, right? Maybe they want to take this kind of month off to really cram and, and, and think, or because a lot of people have been talking about the talent system, like in the forums, you know, on Reddit, there's a lot of people talking about it. So hopefully the developers are looking at that feedback and, and saying to themselves, like, is this enough customization? Because I, I, I want to ask you guys in all seriousness, in all seriousness, is this talent tree something that you would be happy with as, as far as like an alpha two starting product? Like I read it, like, would you be fine with having two options to customize exert? Just two, two options. That's it. That's all you get. And some abilities you get no customization at all. Like, you know, like Cataclysm. You take Cataclysm as is. Like, there's no customization. Like, you just, you take the ability or you don't. You know? Like, I just think that this talent tree needs a lot of love. It needs you. I think once they can figure out a direction... I, I think they, I think we can start leaving feedback accordingly. I just see this talent tree and I see no direction. I see no, I, I don't see it. Like I, I, I literally don't see, um, I just don't see it. Like, I don't know. Like, and, and again, like it's fine. You know what I mean? I understand that they have these abilities, you know, because, you know, the one thing, <clears throat> I had to learn is that there's a lot of times and I've heard Steven say it in the past is that especially with UI, which this is definitely a UI element is, um, functional systems. And Steven has said that, you know, this is not like a finished UI. This is only functional. The reason why they say that is because they have a list of certain things that are completed and a list of certain things that are still pending. So right now, all of these abilities, you know, that are there, except of course for the work in progress one, are all stuff that's in the can for Alpha 2. It's all checked and done. There's still abilities that are still pending. So with the stuff that is active and finished, how can we turn these abilities into a somewhat workable talent tree of sorts? And I just think that this particular talent tree, it's weak. It's weak on, you know, first of all, where you start from. It's weak on, you know, the actual customization of certain abilities. I don't think there's enough customization. Um, I think it's very basic customization. Um, this is very reminiscent to me of Lost Ark with their tripod system. Their tripod system, you know, in my opinion, is a very weak system of customization. You have an ability, there's three options to choose from, and that's all you get. Like, it's just... You know, and some people like that. Some people don't like too much customization because they want it to be easier for them. But I think if I had to say as an example, this is the Diablo 4 of talent trees. This is very basic. This is super beginner. Um, and I am not asking for a Path of Exile talent tree. I am asking for something in the middle. Something with a little bit more teeth, something a little bit more bones, you know, just, you know, Something they can flesh into, but I, I, I just think that this particular talent tree isn't even a good starting place. Like it, it's not even a good foundation. If I was up to them, I would literally scrap this entire thing and just start over and start over with a direction that the team can get behind and the team could be like, okay, we see our vision now. Like we see what we want to do. And it doesn't have to be WoW, it doesn't have to be Lost Ark, it doesn't have to be New World, it doesn't have to be Last Epoch, but whatever your vision is, be clear about it so us, the gamers, can actually leave feedback accordingly and doesn't go against your foundation, doesn't go against your vision. It adds to the vision, it adds to the philosophy. You know, that is, in my opinion, the best way for us to leave feedback about this game that we can't play yet. So... Let me see. I think they can get stuck in the rabbit hole with this tree as they add new stuff to it. It can break something else. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean, right? So this is what? Maybe. Let me see. One, two, three. 
uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, about 21 abilities that they have. So they have half, right? If it's 20 to 40, right? They either have half or a little more than half at this point. So again, I I, I don't know like what they're thinking. And I think that's kind of dangerous. The fact that most, most seasoned people look at this tree and are confused. That's a bad thing. That's bad. Um, We as... Uh, you know, most people that I've, that I've seen in the ashes community are like either five, 10, or even 15 year veterans, some longer in the MMO space. And by looking at this tree, if you are confused, that is a bad thing. So that's basically all I can say about that. Um, we need a better foundation for this system and whatever you come up with by giving us your new philosophy we can better leave feedback I would personally start over with the tree and see what you guys come up with. I mean, I think that's as you think I should add anything to this? Like, I mean, I, I think I'm pretty fair as far as like leaving feedback as far as just the the talent tree yo what's going on man glad to see you here we're just talking about the fighter talent tree <clears throat> now i'm not uh too in depth the class builds like you good sir but as a starting tree i think it is good enough to start I think if they stick with this model, it's only going to get worse for us as we go into the Alpha 2. That's my opinion. I I literally think they just need to start over. If they start over, or if there's already, if, if Brian or someone from his team has something in mind, and they're like, well, we literally just kind of, I honestly, I wouldn't even care if he said, hey, dude, we just kind of compiled this together. You know, we're just sort of playing with it like cool play with it but this isn't it I'll, that's all i'll say as this being presented to us if you're playing with it keep playing with it keep playing with it because this this is not it i can tell you that right now and ever honestly a lot of people that i've talked to don't like this like i i have yet to hear somebody say oh yeah the talent tree so good <laughs> like i have yet to hear anybody really say something like that and again if you if we talk about like the the combat right that we saw was it finished absolutely not but man what a way they've come since alpha since alpha one like i mean if, if y'all have watched narc's new video i mean you kind of showcased a lot of the the evolution of the melee combat and it's just in a way better state now compared to where it was in alpha one compared to where it was during the melee showcase it's just night and day but it still needs refinement it still needs um you know especially with the basic attack i think the basic attack still needs a little bit of work i think some of the animations need a little bit of work you know what i mean but that's literally what i mean a little bit of work like we're almost there which is kind of crazy to say like i i think like when I looked at the Alpha One combat, I thought we were like miles away. When we, when I saw the basic uh, melee uh, showcase, I was like, "Wow, okay, we've came a, we've came a long way," you know. 
And, um, uh, weirdo, thank you so much for the follow, man. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Um, but now it's like, dude, like, I feel like we're turning the corner, you know, we're, we're literally heading to the straightaway at this point. Um, muscles, dude, thank you so much for the follow, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a really good thing because again, if we can get to the point of just polishing the combat at the start of alpha two, holy God, what a, what a great thing. Because in most alpha MMO stated, like states, the combat is nowhere near done. Like nowhere near, like usually, usually. Like we don't get like pretty solidified combat until betas of like, you know, alpha MMOs. So if we can get to the point where, you know, and again, Asmin, many MMO content creators, even I myself, like combat is just so important to nail. And I think what they're truly wanting is to get the foundation, like the button to button, like button mashing, satisfying and crunchy and good. And most of all, fun at the start on day one of Alpha 2. I think that's what they're doing. I think that's exactly what they're trying to go for. But man, like it's not perfect. Like I think we're like, I think combat is like at a seven out of 10. Like, and I'm talking melee combat. Like we're at a seven out of 10. We, we have three more points to go to reach perfection, which is insane because I know we have a lot of time in the alpha too. And it's always that, that last little bit. And every time I talk to a, uh, like a game developer, they always say like, it's, it's really easy to go from like 0% to like 60 or even 80, but to go from 80 to a hundred it feels like you're going from zero to 80, like four times over just to go from 80 to hundred. Like it's, there's so much, uh, Anton, dude, it's good to see you, man. Uh, 11 in YouTube chat, only five likes. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, dude. If they want to like the video, they can like it. Um, but I appreciate the shout out Anton. I, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think they've just taken the correct steps of fleshing out the entire archetype first. Then with the talent trees um, being their next step in choosing how they want players to progress through the kit, uh, which is why the talent tree is lackluster. No, absolutely. Like, I, I think, again, like, Intrepid is also trying to hire, right? I think that there's developers wearing multiple hats. I think they're, you know, I, not saying I, I, I think they're overworked or anything like that, but I, I think, again, they need help right and this is why i'm so adamant and i'm so passionate and i thank god for our content creators like i'm talking about like jamie nice uh burns narc because we are truly are trying our best to leave feedback to intrepid to you know get you know the ball rolling even faster and it's not just us like i want to also shout out the entire ashes community because hell if you literally go like there, there has been a ton of people like Ashes and Noir, like I'm sure you've seen him on Twitch chat. You know what I mean? He left a part two like of stuff like, like he's literally like, he's not the only one. There's been so many people, you know, leaving feedback, you know, about this showcase, you know, so many passionate people. And I think that's really, really important to the overall health of Alpha 2 and more so Ashes of Creation. So we're, I mean, we're all trying our best, man. Like we all want this game to succeed. We all want this game to be the thing that we're going to be doing for the next, you know, five years, 10 years and longer. You know what I mean? We're all trying our best here. Um, but I, I just don't, you know, and I'm going to pick on nice for a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to pick on nice. And is there no one else? When I was watching them for a little bit yesterday, I heard them say some stuff like, uh, I think nice gave the melee showcase like a 10 out of 10. And I think, uh, is there no one else gave it like a nine out of 10. And, you know, I think everybody's very different on their like scales, especially when it's like a one to 10 scale. Right. In my opinion, you know, and I think I said it, uh, during, uh, cause I think I said something during the Twitch chat. And I said, I, I think it was a seven out of 10 
Or was that for Loreforge? No, I don't want to get confused now. No, I was typing on Loreforge, but I, I heard nice and as there no one say something like that. Uh, and I said it was a 7 out of 10. And I think Wizzy was like, like, what do you mean a 7 out of 10? It was you're like, what? Are, what? You know what I mean? I don't think there was anything wrong for me saying that. Like, I think a 7 out of 10 is super respectable. Because I'm thinking a 10 out of 10 is literally perfection. Like, Intrepid, stop touching combat. It's perfect. Stop doing anything to it. Like, that's what I think of as a 10 out of 10. We aren't there yet. You know what I mean? Like, there's things There's things I still want them to touch. There's still, thing I, there, there's still things I want them to refine and get better with, right? So in my mind, like, that's how I treat it. It's not trying to talk bad. You know what I mean? Or, or say anything negative about like their work. I think, dude, their work has come an insanely long way, but it does need some touch up. You know what I mean? And again, like in, in my mind, like the scales of like a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, or even an eight out of 10 is, is quite high. You know what I mean? And again, I think for even me and how I rate stuff for even for me to say seven out of 10, when the game is still an alpha we're still years away from the live launch i think that's pretty big for me like seriously like i think that's <laughs> you know for an alpha that's amazing to be fair yes i my sentiments exactly a seven out of ten for their melee combat i think is a very fucking good score <laughs> like it to me it is a 10 out of 10 but it's seven out of ten you know what i mean like you know like it's just it's crazy how how much they've improved and how again the sounds and the animations i still i still think some of the animations need a little bit of a tweaking some of the vfx need a little bit of like si like simmering down especially the light effects i think some of the light effects are a little bombastic and they need to be toned down a bit um but yeah like god for it to be a 7 out of 10 like holy shit if i was a developer dude, i'd be patting myself on the freaking back uh, especially the audio team dude i think the audio team Dude, audio team, awesome. Like, holy crap. The sounds, I, I really don't have anything bad to say about the sounds that I heard from the melee comp or from the from the fighter showcase. They were just good. Like, damn good. I I I personally loved it. Like I was just in awe with like the sound effects. And, you know, uh again, these are developers that are so passionate that put a lot of thought and heart and soul into this shit you know I, I i want them to to take pride in what they're doing but i don't want to just gas them up you know and and not have anything to say about it you know what i mean and honestly like i i wish i, I wish i could say something about the sound uh because i i think honestly like if i were to hear those same like seriously if i were to hear those same sounds in the live game um, I, I, I wouldn't bat an eye. Like, I, I, I seriously wouldn't. Like, that I can say is probably a 10 out of 10. The sound design for their melee combat showcase, probably 10 out of 10. That, that, that I can probably say very definitively for, definitively for me. Um, notice from the environment sounds early on, even before the, the showcase. Oh, the environment sounds. I remember that showcase... Uh, when they showed off the ranged combat. So it wasn't the ranger showcase. It was the ranged combat. And that showcase, the, the environmental sounds were so good. But then there was also the seasonal showcase. And the seasonal showcase was freaking insane. The seasonal trailer was crazy. Just hearing like the birds chirping and the wind sounds and just like, holy shit. Like the sound team is just on fire. Like they, they, they literally said, Hey, new world, hold, like hold my beer <laughs> because we're going to show you guys up because I mean, and again, I love that. I love the fact that they, they heard all of this feedback from new world about their sound design and said, yes, like try to do that intrepid. And they're like, we got you, bro. We got you, you know? And again, you look at the character creator, they're literally taking inspiration from the best character creator in the MMO space, which is from BDO. And they're just literally going to do that, but maybe even better. I don't know, but at least comparable, like that's the goal. Like that's the bar that they want to hit, which is insane, you know, 
so okay okay so what does the fighter class lack Do this. I'm gonna do this in bowl. Okay. Uh, sound of moving water was present even before the small improvement in water escapes. Uh, I think one thing for World One is to touch up of the uh, colors, adding a bit more red on the spin itself, making it fit more with the whole kit. Let me see. Uh, what I love to hear is the sound of plate armor uh, clacking as you walk. Mm. I think it's hard for the sound design to actually like put sound to every equipped armor. I think that's kind of much, in my opinion. I I I don't even know if they could even do to where if your if your target has armor if even the sword sound effects would even be comparable to like you hitting something unless they're just going to go with like i said the basic effects or the basic sound effects of just the abilities themselves you know so it, it's it's for me it's really hard to tell like as far as like how deep they're going to want to go in sound design um i would love to know but i i, I don't think they're going to go that far to be totally honest with you um So sorry. I got a text message. Okay. Um, so I know J Rock, he spoke earlier and he said that the fighter lacks an actual stun. Now, I know this wasn't showcased during um, the live stream, but this note here. Um, it's called knockout and it says knock out target enemy, putting them to sleep for 10 seconds. Any damage breaks the effect. Like, I don't know if, if J rock knows about this particular ability or if he wants like an actual, like you're stunned for like four seconds, like even through damage, uh, 10 seconds is a long time in PVP. It is a long time PVP, but any damage breaks the effect. Uh, but that's more of a hard CC. I want to stun. Yes. So like you want to stun to where I can stun you for like four seconds. And even, even through my damage, you'll still be stunned or three seconds or so. Okay. Like, you know, whatever the case is, um, let me see. A hard stun. Um, maybe three seconds long. Maybe spec into hammers for a stun on, on the tree. Uh, fighter has this. Fighter has an actual stun, not a sleep. Like a stun. I didn't see a stun on the tree. Can anyone point out to me if there, let me see, um, or more ways to slow the enemy, but, uh, that can be built into the weapons like a mace or something that could actually be built into the weapon talent tree. I do agree with you, J rock that there, there could be abilities. There was the maim ability, if I'm not mistaken, um, or not maim. It was crippling blow. This one allows this, this, the, the slow on the target. Yeah, that's a, that's a snare, soft CC. Yep, yeah, no, I totally get it. I'm just saying that th this is ability where it actually slows down the target. Not stuns, but slows down. Um, let me see. There's also another archetype that will... Um, there's also another archetype that you will be getting 
skills from? You mean from the fighter? Because the... So the fighter can transform into like fighter fighter, fighter ranger, fighter cleric, fighter tank. You know, we all know all of the different augments, right? Now, we don't know if those abilities are going to change certain abilities to actually offer a true stun. That could be the case. Um, But I guess we're more talking about a foundational level, right? Like, do we want the fighter to have a stun at a foundational level, not at a augmented second class level, but at a foundational level? I think that's the better, the better point of, of discussion, right? Because we're not trying to talk about the hunter class or the, you know, the augmented class class. Like we're talking about just the primary archetype fighter. That's it. Let me see. Fighter tank is dreadnought. Maybe it gets a stun from there. Possibly, you know, possibly. But I guess like for me, I, I'm just trying to think, do you know, do we want a hard stun on the fighter at a foundational level? You know, the way we have like heroic leap at a foundational level, you don't need to like spec into something or, you know, have a, a your second class be present in order to heroic leap. You have heroic leap like from the foundational kit of the fighter. Let me see. It seems every class so far except Ranger. Um, yeah, exactly. Base kit. I want a heart stun. Uh, three seconds. Okay. Let me see. So for me, honestly, mobility is like really good. Like, so clearly the fighter does not lack mobility like at all the one thing that i do see is a little bit of lack of single target so i see w or way more aoe abilities on the fighter than i do single target abilities so Let me see a three second stun with less CD uh, greater than hard 10 second stun with a long CD 10 seconds. Maybe even too much mobility. Honestly, I don't think it's too much. In, in my opinion, I'm just going to say it. Melee gets screwed most of the time in MMOs when it comes to mobility. I mean, I'm just being honest. Most of the time melee get really screwed when it comes to mobility and it's usually always the advantage of these range classes range already have a huge advantage by being ranged you know what i mean and then in most mmos the melee get screwed because they have to be at their target to do something and the fighter already has a stance to move faster they have a jump they have a a, 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 a charge that they can do in midair if they need to like, I think they have pretty damn good mobility. I really do. And that's all they got. They got their stance, they got their jump, and they got their uh, charge. That's three things. I think that's a great starting point, to be honest. And we don't even know how much more mobility that we're going to get with, like, augmenting or with, like, adding a secondary class. Like, what is a fighter rogue going to look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, we know that the the rogue is probably going to be the most mobile class in Ashes of Creation. So, yeah, true. As a, as a mage main in almost every MMO, melee gets screwed a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Someone can actually validate me when it comes to that opinion. Because it's true. It's so true. Let me see. Ranger is the strongest skill for skill out of everything uh, that we have sown. Hmm. I gotta go watch the, the the Ranger showcase compared to the fighter. I, I've seen the I've seen the fighter again, to be honest. So I think I gotta see the Ranger again. But honestly, like I think when it comes to 
like if I were to see a 1v1 of a of a of a ranger and a fighter I think a good fighter can just kill a ranger easy uh because again like snipe requires a certain wind up right so if if you're just like charging your target leaping in the air blitzing them and stuff like that they're not going to get snipe off they're not the one thing that i want to see is an interrupt that's the one thing i didn't even see from the fighter where is the interrupt has there been any skills from the fighter that interrupts a spell cast Has anyone seen that? Like, uh, am I, am I missing that? Like I, when I was looking at these abilities, I didn't see anything that said interrupt spell cast. The stagger or knockdown interrupt. I don't know. It's a good question. I, I, I don't know. But for me, I that's a good, you know, like an actual, like I think every melee class needs an interrupt. Personally. That That's just my opinion. Interpret. <laughs> interrupt uh or spell casting is needed for sure yeah exactly and the ranger has two of them see the heart cc would count um as an interrupt but is it though like i mean yes you can use like knock like knock up you know to sleep your target but like i mean that's i hate abilities that are like that like meaning like oh well you have to use this ability to interrupt the spell cast when you're not trying to do that and what if the person is immune to sleep right like you you should have some kind of a kick or some kind of a pummel or some just some kind of a simple interrupt like hey you're casting a spell boom no you're not like i think it's a very simple thing do cast times allow for interrupt um they seem they seem cast or these they seem quick cast uh times they could be but again if you look at let's say the uh snipe ability right the snipe ability clearly has a charge timer or a, a, like a casting timer. So in my opinion, if you have an interrupt, you should be able to stop that cast. You know, like that, that to me is just a no brainer. You know, you're casting a, a spell, get pummeled, you get, you know, interrupted. Boom. No, you're not, you know, like, so, and there's a lot of spells that in, in the game, in my opinion, that have a pretty decent spell cast. You think of like the mage, there was the uh, chain lightning spell that has like a pretty, I think it's like a two second cast time. So, I mean, they're not all the spells are like instant cast spells, right? So, yeah, I think having just a simple melee interrupt, uh, especially even for PVE, right? You're going out and questing and stuff like that. If there's a like a minotaur shaman that's casting something you want to be able to pummel them right to be like ah like boom no you're not you know um you you need you need to have like some kind of a melee interrupt for the fighter in my opinion uh let me see sustain is pretty good uh but in my opinion having some defensives instead of all sustain would be better mm, is the fighter lacking defensive stuff so they have blood fusion they have the defensive stance right which is the form i think it's called form of uh celerity 
Um, and they also have exert. Right? Doesn't exert? No. Hold on. No, I think all they have is blood fusion. For def they have they have the stance. Uh, there's the defensive stance right here. So while in this form, the caster receives a uh, four plus four percent disabled resistance chance uh, per ten combat momentum up to a maximum of forty. Disable resistance. Okay. Disable. Do they mean like disarm? What is disable? Uh, plus an option to choose tank uh, augments. I'm pretty sure the augment system is going to be a whole other system than the talent tree. I really, really do. Which is why I think they need a better foundation for the talent tree. That's why I said, why I said that. Um, let me see. I've honestly always run a DPS, a few cleric episodes mixed in, but mainly always a good spec, speedy, invisible thief. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see the rogue, man. I think the rogue's gonna be so good. Um, interesting. So disable. I wonder. I wonder if the wiki has something about it's under stats. Of course, they're not going to have something specific about it. So when I hear disable, like I think disarm. But I don't know if that wording would be interchangeable or if it's literally just a whole new thing that isn't disarming the target. Like, what if disable is like a stun? Right? I mean, you're disabled. Can't do anything. That's what disabled means, right? Like, in a sense, like you're helpless. So... Ah, of course not. They don't have... Um, all right. So a hard stun, a melee interrupt. Is there anything else, uh, for, from you guys? Is there anything else you feel like the fighter lacks in toolkit? Do you feel like there's anything that feels missing? <laughs> what if? Uh, disable turns off the frame generation on your graphics card. Dude, that is going to be the most overpowered needs to be nerfed ability in Ashes. I'll tell you that right now, dude. Let me see. I wouldn't mind seeing combat skills combined with a short duration stun. A cleric could have a skill called a bl uh, blinding light, which could be a dot skill which interrupts and stuns for 2.5 to 3 seconds. Of course, other classes uh, should have counters. Well, so let, let's let's talk about counters for a second. What counter does the fighter have? Because we, we talk about counters, right? Well, what does the fighter do as a counter? Like, are we talking about exert being the counter? Your major cooldown being its counter? Because you hit exert and now you're completely immune to all, you know, um, disabling effects. What was it? All like you're basically immu immune to like, uh, yeah, disabling effects. See, I'm so I, disabling to me is like stuns or like just anything. Let me see. Clerics have stuns, I think, but long cooldown and it's short as fuck, like five 
seconds for like full momentum bar. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I think exert needs to be buffed a little bit personally. But I'm not really too worried about that because that's a simple alpha two thing that if like they need a buff it, they will. So I'm not really I'm not really too worried about the numerical stuff for it just yet, because if it we'll know when it feels good, we'll know when it feels right. But again, this this is the thing that I'm talking about. For me, the counter would be a stun, would be a interrupt. But the fighter currently like lacks those things. So I don't know. I think everything else though I will say this. Um uh would like to see more single target options for abilities. as there were many AOE options for skills. That's my thing. I, I, there's, you know, there was only like three single target abilities. There was like the execute ability. There was, um, what was it? Maim. Your basic attack. Well, basic attack isn't technically a single target. It can always be used to cleave with as well. But there just wasn't that many like single target abilities. I felt like the majority of it was AoE. And to me, I feel like it's fine if that's the philosophy they want for the fighter. Because I love classes that have weaknesses. Like classes that shined in a certain aspect and i know this is maybe not in a in a, a popular opinion but what if fighter is meant to be the aoe melee spec or class right it does not shine in single target like fighters aren't meant like yeah we can do some single target stuff but that's not where the fighter shines the the rogue let's say as an example the rogue here let me move my my camera down over here the rogue shines in single target uh dude lemons and um a a zero i think that's what it's pronounced a zero thank you so much for the follow thank you thank you thank you um i wouldn't mind that I would not mind if the rogue had more single target options because the foundational principle is we want rogues to be the single target killing machine. We want, you know, um, the fighter to be the AOE meat grinder class. Yeah, you can do some single target, but that's not where we want you to shine. If they actually came out and said that, I would, I would literally delete the sentence of like, we need more single target options. I would delete it in a second. Because I love classes that have a clear strength, but there's some clear weaknesses, right? And I don't mind that. I think that's where classes excel. I think, especially coming from WoW, we got we got homogenized way too much to where every single class is like a cookie cutter of every other class. Like, it's just a different aesthetic. Like, you know, what really is the difference of playing this tank compared to this other tank when everybody has a DR, everybody has a heal, everybody has a CC, everybody has a stun, everybody has like a defensive DR, everybody has like, it's like all classes have one, you know? There isn't any distinction anymore in classes or at least in class design. So I, again, I don't mind if the fighter is gonna be more AOE based than some other classes. I don't mind that at all. I just want, let me see. Uh, I'm not sure it has bad single target, just everything cleaves. No, I'm again, I'm just making an example of, you know, where in my opinion, especially a lot of classic MMOs, classic MMOs had, had clear strengths and weaknesses for their classes. 
like every single class you know in in old mmos didn't excel in every single thing oh well this class excels in single target two target cleave uh five target plus you know um has amazing heals amazing dps can be amazing sustain like no classes was built that way back in the day you know you had a class that shined in a certain in a certain aspect of combat they excelled in a certain part of the trinity and that was that you know but now if you're dps you got to excel in everything you got to excel in in single target you got to excel in aoe you got to excel in two target cleave you got to excel at rating you got to excel at dungeons you got to excel at every, like it just it it makes it so boring you know and especially in a game where you want to bring 40 people to go and kill world, world bosses and stuff like you i think people miss feeling needed for that particular job right and everybody's job is to, is to dps right you know is to kill the thing but at the same time people people want to feel like they're not just like everybody else and that's what a lot of current mmos do to those people here i'm gonna go big for a second you have a lot of, you know, where, you know, there's certain philosophies of like, you know, bring the class, not the player. And I feel like, or uh, it was bring the player, not the class. And I feel like that's such a bad way to go about it. Um, I feel like classes need to feel needed at a certain point, you know? And it's like, oh man, we desperately need a bard. Or we desperately need a rogue, you know, like, oh, you know, let's just bring Jimmy or whatever. Right. Like, and again, you can still do that in Ashes, but I can guarantee you one thing. If you're running a raid and you don't have a bard, you're going to feel it and it's going to probably feel bad because you're going to know what it feels like to play with a bard, which feels good. Everyone's getting buffed and you got that nice, you know, AOE, like slight heals or like, you know, whatever, whatever they choose to do for the bard. But usually the bard is very much of a buff debuff class, right? And everybody loves being buffed, right? It's like, you know, when you're playing World of Warcraft and you get like the Shaman Totem or Wind Fury, does that, does that not feel good to have? So when you don't have it, you're like, ugh, like, why can't we have Wind Fury all the time? You know what I mean? And, and that's what it is. You know what I mean? Rock, paper, scissors. Exactly. You know, like if every class was a Swiss army knife instead of a scissor or instead of a rock or instead of a paper, because that's literally what classes are now. It's a Swiss army knife. You literally just boom. Like you had any, any oh, you need this. I, I got it. You need this. Oh, I got that too. You need this. Oh, I got that. like, I, I just don't think that every class should have the full utility belt. You know what I mean? Like, there should be some things that your class clearly lacks and clearly has a weakness in, you know? And I really hope Ashes does that for these classes. Like, that's what I would love Steven and their their combat design or even their class designers to talk about. Is like, you know, if we're going with a rock, paper, scissors approach, it's because clearly certain classes have very clear strengths. But that also means they have very clear weaknesses. And I know that's more implied because, you know, when you say rock, paper, scissors, well, it's implied that scissors always beats paper, right? Like, <laughs> it's pretty, you know, self-explanatory at that point. Um, however, because there are people behind the computer, because you could actually play a very good paper against a very terrible scissors player, the paper player may actually have a shot at winning, but it's going to have a lot of overcoming adversity to, to do that, right? To beat that player. Um, I think a decent player, right? A decent player, someone that actually knows what they're doing, maybe not the best, but a decent player should be able to beat another decent player um, if they were a rock and they were coming up against a uh, a paper, right? Like that, there should be like where the, the in that case, the paper player would win, you know, being, you know, decently equal in that sense.
Uh, let me see. You do remember that fighter is a base class. Yes, it's a base archetype. I do remember that. Uh, they had not chosen a archetype to alter what skill, what the skills do. Um, so a lot of what you're saying is pointless because archetype will change how it plays altogether, etc. Mage fighter, battle mage changes the charge from uh charge to a blink um, that does the same thing. No, I get that, but I can only leave feedback on the primary archetype as it currently stands. So I'm trying to say at a foundational level, what does the fighter lack? Right. I'm also trying to say when it comes to the talent tree, like how can this talent tree at a foundational level, just talking about the primary archetype, how that could um, help shape the way for from leveling from level one to level 25. Right. Because that tree is going to be with you. So you that feeling of leveling and, and putting points in that talent system needs to feel good. So this is the whole point of this conversation is to literally hammer out those details because we're very rapidly approaching alpha two. So let me see the way to overcome uh, that is to give the different archetypes varying degree of power, depending upon the archetype itself. A bard should have more stun and interruptibility and power because they don't tank and can't heal themselves. Tanks uh, shouldn't need one. Uh, Ranger DPS should feel minimal. Cleric, sure, but at more minimal. Uh, it all depends on how classes fight and their armor levels, in my opinion. Yes, I, I think it's not really their armor levels for me because it because every class can literally like put whatever wep, whatever armor they want, whether it's light armor, medium armor, or heavy armor. I think it's more so in their kits of where their strengths lie against other classes. And, and what I mean by kits is their ability kit, right? The buttons they can push to kill their opponents with. There needs to clearly be certain abilities that lack in one class that another class has. You know, and that class that has those abilities has other abilities they don't have that the class that they beat does have. Does that make sense? Like that's how, that's how rock, paper, scissors works, right? Like you need to give the skills to certain classes that can trump that class with that 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 other class doesn't have the tools necessary to beat that class unless that person is just a bad player right like if if they're you know uh no offense playing like steven <laughs> like the way it was during the fighter showcase and just like literally standing against the wall like not pushing buttons or not doing anything then yes, you should be able to beat that class no matter what your class is, right? But I think if you're, you know, you're, you you have a pretty good grip as to your toolkit and you're like a decent PvPer, like there should be those things when, again, if a rogue is a rock and you're coming up against a bard, which is, you know, uh, a scissors, nine out of 10 times, the decent rogue should beat the 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 decent bard because rock versus uh scissors you know like that's how it should be you know and again i also feel like you know let me also be very clear in this too ashes of creation is not meant to be balanced at a 1v1 level steven has said that many 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 times so i i want to be very clear if there's anybody new listening or anybody that doesn't know as much about Ashes of Creation, this game is not meant to be balanced at a 1v1 level. It's not even meant to be balanced at a 2v2 level or a 3v3. This game, Ashes of Creation, is meant to be balanced at an 8-group level. That's where the balance comes in. When all archetypes, base archetypes, are present. That's where the balance comes in. So, again, the reason why I'm saying at a 1v1 level is because the 1v1 level will be unbalanced. <laughs> like, that's why I'm saying this. Like, that's why the rock, paper, scissors approach is going to be more apparent to players at a 1v1 level, because that's not where the balance is meant to be. If you are a bard, you will always be scared shitless of rogues, <laughs> because that is your, that you are the, you are rock. And, um, or you are scissors and they are rock. 
and that you'll lose nine out of 10 times, unless you have their counter with you in your party. And now that's where, again, some of the balances may become, you know, level again, or may become this level. Like it just, it ultimately just depends. That's why I always tell people, bring people in your group, you know, group up with people because you never know when you're going to engage into PVP and Ashes of Creation. It's always, it's always lurking around the corner. Uh, assuming Trevin makes the rogue, the rock and the Bart, the scissors. Well, yeah, of course I, I'm just, it's all assumption at this point. We're also welcome, dude. It's good to see you, man. Uh, totally agree with that, which is why I'm, um, which is why I'm for uh, utility and not just uh, all utility being created for all archetypes equally. Well, exactly. And again, it's it we because balance is meant to be at the eight group level. We all we have to make that assumption too that at the one v level, one v one level, it will be unbalanced to all hell. <laughs> so there will be certain classes that will just trump other classes like no problem, you know. But I think even when I say no problem. It just means that if you are a very, if you are a decent player going up another decent player, like the one that has the disadvantage is going to have a disadvantage. Like, you know, it's kind of like playing with one arm, you know what I mean? Like you don't have both to play with. That's what it's going to feel like, you know what I mean? And it, and that's fine. Like that's where, you know, grouping up and having people with you in your party. So that way it's like, Hey, I'm weak when it comes to this, but I'm strong when it comes to that. So don't don't feel bad you know what i mean like i got you you know, that's what this game is all about it's it's about filling in those gaps of weakness with other people because those other people have strengths that you don't have like that's the entire point of an mmorpg right is to have that feeling like hey i got that thing you need because my class has it and your class does not that's the whole reason why we love mmos right <laughs> like it's it's the beauty of it all you would see uh utility shouldn't be equal for all classes you should need a class uh with you that provides the utility your class doesn't have i mean possibly and again even when it comes to this stuff right we talk about a hearthstone for three seconds uh a melee intro for spell casting you know um and or even say more single target uh options for abilities again all of these things could be the developer can be like, nope, sorry, we don't want to give you guys a stun. We don't want to give you guys an interrupt. We want you to bring other classes to to do that stuff. That could be a philosophy that Intrepid has. I don't know. But I am personally just leaving this feedback because I think it. let's start here first and let's see what they say, right? Let's see what they want because they could easily just say, oh yeah, a hard stun. The fighter does have a hard stun. We just didn't showcase it because the the VFX or the animations aren't done yet for that ability. So we didn't showcase that ability at all. But the fighter does have a hard stun. Oh, a melee interrupt. Yes, there is a melee interrupt for the fighter. We just didn't showcase it. Yada, yada, yada. You know, whatever. Um, Hey, bro, where do you go to bite that? Uh, Dude, Terry. So sorry, dude. Uh, I should have I should be a, a good streamer. And, and have like the exclamation point. Um, and it just comes up on my Twitch, but I am not a good streamer. But that is the link right there. I will add that tonight, I promise. So I think. Um, is Does that work? Okay, so I need to do that too. I got to actually. I'm going to write that down. Before I forget, I got to add. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I got to <laughs> streamer is bad. Yes, I am super bad. Okay. I appreciate it if you want to get it if you want to get some from the store. Thank you, thank you so much. Um took me a bit to get that store. <laughs> Boo L streamer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I have a lot of uh I got a lot a lot of leveling up to do. I, I I appreciate it though. Uh thank you, Terry. Thank you, thank you. Um But yeah, I think again, it, it's it's all about just kind of learning the core philosophies of their of their class system, what they want to do. 
what does the fighter want to excel in what do they want their weakness in like that's why i would love to talk to a developer about these things like on my on my podcast i would love if you know again once we get close to the alpha 2 if like steven wants to come on or you know brian wants to come on and talk do i'd love to talk to brian about the talent trees because i am very passionate about those talent trees and just to, just to hear like what the internal philosophy is or like what they want to to do with these trees or even if they could even talk about like the augment system right like how does the augment system incorporate into these trees right like are we going to have three separate trees of sorts right we're going to have the ability tree the weapon tree and the augment tree like how does all of that interact how does all of that interface you know <clears throat> i want to hear about eight person balance someone explain that shit show to me <laughs> well hopefully intrepid can hopefully we'll see fupo how's it going man uh do you not think they have said uh the balance will um necessarily a full group uh more does a group focused balance where as long as you have the diversity of classes present that's going to be equal level playing field it's going to be very dependent on skill and strategy um yeah no i i believe that i i think i remember steven talking about that it was gonna be balanced around an eight person group around basically having one of each uh base archetype i remember him saying something like that about balance like i could be wrong but I feel like I'm not. I feel like that. I remember that very clearly. Um, let me see. Um, would be interested to get that uh, quote if it is a thing. I can look for it in the wiki. But I remember. I remember Stephen talking about balance, and he talked about it. He talked about it in a in an eight person group. Uh, let me see. Oh, it looks like he said almost like what you said, Fupo. It's like there will be matchups in 1v1 where one class will be superior to another. And that application should be a rock, paper, scissors dynamic. We want there to be a counterplay between the different classes. Instead, it's going to be a group focus balance. And I guess I always interpret a group as eight because that's what a group is in ashes um where as long as you have the diversity of classes present that's going to be an equal level playing field it's also going to be very dependent on skill and strategy balance wise there'll be a number of different interactions mechanically with an ability that you can adjust in order to balance its power the most common ones are cooldown mana consumption damage jun effect status uh, conferred and promotion of that status effect status and range group composition is important see we are focused around group balance yeah i guess it, i guess he's never said eight person group but if you have like a 3v3 and you have the counter for every other counter that might be the balance he's kind of talking about i'm not too sure it all just depends just i've never seen it so i'm curious no i know and maybe it's just hearing and 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 almost implying certain things too i always just assume when he said group balance well you know ashes's group is you know like you think of group in world of warcraft it's five players a group in ashes is eight so every time he said group i always assumed eight players so i thought one of each archetype uh there are eight person groups demonstrated in the caravan live stream uh yes no for sure um so we automatically apply that to pvp balance as well easier to easier to probably think of as eight versus eight for simplicity's sake yeah I think the disconnect is he says PVE content will be scaled for eight person group. Yeah, I know I, it, it's when he says group like balance, like I, I, in my mind, I immediately assume eight players. So we'll have to wait and see. That's basically it. Um, 
But yeah, there's basically a lot. Hmm. I'm trying to see how I can finish this off because I feel like I'm pretty much done with this post. Um. See, I feel like certain clashes should lack certain qualities and abilities in order to bring those other classes. I don't know what the team wants the fighter class to lack in that sense so I left feedback according to what was missing overall I was greatly pleased with the updated melee combat and what the fighter class offers in terms of abilities, sounds, VFX, and animations. pretty good right oh shit you're not even seeing what i'm typing oh god i am a bad streamer let me see hey vladis love the youtube content and interviews with people going into aoc uh dude thanks so much man i really appreciate that um i'm actually in the process of trying to talk to another um in my opinion another pretty big mmo youtuber um there's just another big time difference. Um, I, I also just want to give a shout out to Nico, uh, who has like, he has a six hour time difference ahead of me because, you know, he lives across the pond and, you know, um, he was very flexible for me um, since he's a lot later and I'm a lot sooner. So <clears throat> that was really cool of him to do that. But I have hopefully another, hopefully, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. He's uh sort of busy right now so i have he hasn't responded back to me but if man if he says yes that's going to be another really really good conversation but yeah i uh i need to get back up on my on my 1v1s and stuff like that so i appreciate that man thank you thank you thank you it has a rock paper um uh, um me mechanic but if you're geared and skilled you can overcome it sometimes yeah uh i'm also open for another 1v1 whenever you're ready bro dude all right thanks j rock i always appreciate you coming on man um yeah, I think overall, I, I like I said, seven out of ten with this, uh, with the updated melee showcase, or not. I mean, it was a fighter showcase, but like their melee combat was very impressive. I think the animations and everything like that, like I think there, there's still some refinement to be done. There's still some VFX stuff that needs to be done, but Intrepid's not dumb. Like a lot of people have been leaving the same kind of feedback that I'm leaving. I am more than confident enough that they're going to fix and, and keep fixing, keep polishing, keep improving like these things. And man, like what a time, because this is going to be like, I think alpha two could potentially be 
a really crazy time for Intrepid. Like, again, we've all been waiting for this Alpha 2 for a long time. But the fact that we're going to have, like, all these... Um, let me see, because you I want to say thank you for getting me into contact with Grey Sentinels and Anduin, so thank you. So, yeah, no problem, man. Like, I always love talking to uh, guild masters, uh, guild leaders, any kind of leadership for guilds. I think it's very important to, for people to find their their people, right? Whether that's Stogley's Guild in, um, in Dunhold, whether that's Bergen's Guild in Coin, whether that's, you know, uh, Psychophobic's Guild in Suspect, um... You know, or even if it's my guild in Axiom with Angel Cry, like, I, I think there's a lot of amazing guilds out there. Um, you know, people just need to find their home. And I think if they can find their home now, you know, before Ashes is out, like, I think that's going to be in a greater benefit for you guys. Because, you know, every time whenever I played an MMO when the game was already out, you have to learn your people, you know, when you're playing that game and sometimes you're like, Oh, I don't like the way they do group loot or, Oh, I don't like the way they do rating or, Oh, I don't like the way they, they handle their leadership or I don't like the way they handle their, their grunts or whatever. Right. So it's like, if you can learn that stuff now and get that out of the way, that's going to be even better because once the game comes out, if you really like the guild you're playing with, then boom, you know what I mean? Yeah. Genesis dude, even my boy rives guild, dude, you have uh even uh Stequino's guild um uh memorandum I think that's how you say it memorandum uh so there's a whole bunch of like guilds out there you know so yeah 100 percent man i'm really glad you found your people uh let me see in the words of dr strange we're in the end game now 100 percent. let me see i guess i'll find out with uh amnesty um i'm guild flexible he <laughs> he no for sure i mean I think there's also a lot of people in multiple guilds, <laughs> you know, like actually trying to fi find out like, who do I like this guild better? Do I like that guild? I mean, and there's plenty of guilds that actually offer like trial membership. So that way you can kind of go into their discord, meet their people, meet their officers and everything like that. Like, I think it's very important to do that. I think you need to get into the know of those people because they're going to be again. Ashes is going to be a, a game where you rely heavily heavily on your guild for a lot of shit so if you if you're not in a good guild or if you're not in any guild i don't know if you're gonna have a really good time at the start of ashes of creation because there's just it people with guilds are gonna far out scale you compared to you being by yourself in no guild like in ashes of creation I, in my opinion there's just a lot a lot of stuff um but guys, I I am going to get off. I am going to uh, post this. I think this is definitely worth uh, posting. Um, I want to say to every one of you guys, thank you so much for for coming on and helping me with my feedback. Uh, I think we left a, a lot of really good feedback for Intrepid. So um, again, you know, shout out to Roshan, Vaknar, everybody. Um, you know, and their community managers team that literally scour these forums and write these dissertations to the developers. Uh, I think that's awesome. The fact that they do that. So it, it's, you know, it's great. You know, the more feedback, the better. Um, Frills, dude, thank you so much for the follow, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the horde. Um, but yes, uh, I am going to be taking off. I really appreciate it. If you're watching me on Twitch, hit that follow button where you can always follow me anytime I go live on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. It helps the algorithm out. Pump this video to more and more Ashes Pill people. Or also just hit that subscribe button too because you'll stay up to date with any of my content, which I have a video coming out with featuring our boy, Dr. Burns, about Q times in MMORPGs, which I think is going to be a pretty pretty good video for you guys to watch all right so thank you guys so much you guys have a great night be safe out there and i might stream again tomorrow since i'm not going to be streaming on friday so watch out for me tomorrow but i will see you guys on the next one and again let's make mmos great again peace